In this video, I will discuss the structure and function of transposable elements, which I will also refer to as transposons. Transposons are mobile genetic elements which can be found in almost all organisms. They are often referred to as jumping genes because they can move seemingly at random around a genome, jumping from one location to the next in the DNA. Their existence was inferred by Barbara McClintock, for which she received the 1983 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. There are two distinct classes of transposable elements. Class I transposons move by first being copied into an RNA intermediate through transcription, and then that RNA is copied back into DNA through reverse transcription using the enzyme reverse transcriptase. This reverse transcriptase is typically encoded by the transposon. This DNA is then inserted back into the genome. Class II transposons are a little different. There is no RNA intermediate. Instead, the element remains in DNA form throughout the process of transposition. Class II transposons typically encode a multifunctional enzyme called transposase. Transposase recognizes the DNA sequences at the 3' and 5' ends of the transposon and will cut the transposon out of the DNA and then reinsert it somewhere else in the DNA. This is called a cut and paste mechanism of transposition. So how does a transposon move from one chromosomal location to another? Let's take a closer look at the anatomy of a class II transposable element. Here we see that it contains a gene that encodes transposase. Flanking that gene, at the 3' and 5' ends of the transposon, are terminal inverted repeats. These sequences are reverse complements of each other, which means that you see a certain sequence at the 3' end of the transposon, and then you will see the complement of that sequence in reverse order at the 5' end of the same strand of the transposon. This inverted repeat serves as the transposase binding site. Transposase requires the presence of these specific sequences to cleanly cut the transposons out of its initial host site. You will also notice that a transposon is flanked by direct repeats, which are a result of the insertion of the transposon into the DNA. These direct repeats are not part of the transposon, and they are left behind when the transposon leaves this site of the DNA. So let's break transposition of class II transposons into three steps, excision, drift, and integration. For transposition to occur, transposase enzyme needs to be transcribed and translated from its encoding gene in the transposon. These enzymes will bind to the terminal inverted repeats dimerize, and cleave the DNA transposon out of the donor site. The cleaved ends will be repaired by the cell. The transposase will then take the transposon to another part of the DNA, cleave the DNA, insert the transposon, and allow DNA ligase to attach the transposon to the newly cleaved DNA at the recipient site. As you can see, the donor site, that is, the original site of the transposon before mobilization, contains evidence of the transposon through the target site duplication that is left behind, and the recipient site, the site of novel insertion of the transposon, now contains the transposon and a new target site duplication that resulted from the insertion process. In our lab work, we will take advantage of the requirement for the transposase enzyme to control the movement of fly transposons. Now if the sequence in the transposase gene or in the inverted terminal repeats changes, the process of transposition may be disrupted. If the primary DNA sequence of the inverted repeat has been changed or mutated, Transposase cannot recognize the ends of the transposon and does not perform the required double-stranded DNA cut. If the gene encoding the transposase is mutated, the encoded transposase protein might be non-functional and unable to either bind to or cut DNA. In either of these cases, 
the transposon is stuck because it cannot be excised from the DNA. We call a class II transposon with intact inverted terminal repeats and transposase gene autonomous. The transposon itself carries all the functionality that enables its excision and reinsertion into the genome. Conversely, a transposon without an intact transposase gene is called non-autonomous. It still can move, but the transposase needs to be provided by something else. Another intact transposon, for example, or off a co-injected transposase expression plasmid, as we are using in the lab to make transgenic animals. So transposons with a defective or even absent transposase gene can still be excised and reinserted into the genome if the transposase is provided in trans. That means by a different entity than the transposon itself. Now that you understand the basics of transposons, you may be wondering how common they are in living organisms. Transposons are found in almost all living organisms. In fact, remnants of transposons make up around 50% of the human genome sequence. As you can imagine, the evolutionary pressure to silence active transposons in any cell is immense, as mobilization events are highly mutagenic and deleterious. That being said, their ability to move around a genome might have some evolutionary advantage, mainly because they allow for genetic variation when mobilized. Those are the basics of transposons. If you would like to learn more about how transposable elements work, see my video on P-elements in Drosophila.